Welcome to another episode of Business Monday, where we're here to empower you on business. And as we know, knowledge is power. A few years ago, I have met this amazing lady that she wants a business that have every training under the sun for the people who wants it. So today I have Karina here with me. Hi, Karina. Thank you so much for joining our space here today. Thanks, Martha, for having me. It's been uh, exciting, so it's all good. Please tell us what you do and uh, tell us a little bit more about your mission. Uh, I run a The Answer Is Yes Training Academy. So we bring experts from around the world together. So they've got to have at least 10 years' experience. So for me, I feel like unless you've walked through the valley of the shadow of death and come out the other side, you don't really know what works and what doesn't work so if you still got a business after 10 years basically you know your shit you know you know what you're talking about and that's what we want we don't want tire kickers and think people I, i don't want my clients to be test test dummies for people who haven't had enough experience in their field so we brought bring together experts so experts in workplace health and safety human resources all the business systems and infrastructure personal development and business development. And we can do some professional and a lot of professional development as well. So we bring them all together. So think of us like a virtual shopping center. So we have them all in the one house. So you can find the ones that are absolutely awesome and excellent. That is amazing because I like I'm grateful for the opportunity to be part of this journey that you have as well. So today let's talk about something that people may not be aware. Why do people need training? Like give us 10 reasons why people need training. Ah, uh, good questions. Well, I guess the first one is the um, adapting to rapid change. Change in technology is constantly changing at the moment. And people who think that the skills that they learned at school is going to carry them through their career, it doesn't work anymore. Things are changing so rapidly. Look at, you know, the introduction of AI. Things are changing all the time. So this rapid adaptation to technology needs training. So things like automations and artificial intelligence, even soft skills are no longer immune to obsolescence. So you've yes. got to be constantly up to date on change. I mean, oh. think about what what have you what's changed for you in the last 10 years? Oh, definitely the wise of the chat GDP have saved me so much time and <laughs> helping me with my English grammar. I remember when I first started my business, it took me forever to do a post just because that I um, I have le- uh, language difficulties. And now with the help of AI, you can still keep your writing style, but you change and make sure that your, your language is more flowy. Mm-hmm. And that helps a lot for a business owner because a lot of business owners don't admit okay i'm very open to this um that we are not like as good as what we portray to be (laughs) at some areas like for me language difficulty is definitely one of them coming from a background that is not english so like a lot of us are scared to actually share our knowledge inside the things that we're really good at but we're too scared to share with people just because we are lack at some area and that's one of the reasons that why training can give you that additional help and benefit and and using ai is definitely one of yeah so that brings me number two is um, learning to thrive in the digital economy because if you if you went to school in a non-technical in non-technical fields and you didn't have those skills you can't not survive our business can't survive any anymore without being able to thrive in a digital economy you you, you need to be um be seen you know I've, I've had some people say to me well I don't need a website people find me anyway but websites are also used to validate that you're legitimate you know some people give me their business gmail account and I go well how good are you if you don't have your own website if you don't have yeah. your own professional web email address and all of that and I think yeah you're not as experienced as you're making it out to be just as something as simple as that but yes. you know you need to have an understanding of um, marketing analytics, the social media, digital advertising platforms, all of these, you need the upskilling. Now, some people say to me, oh, but I'll just outsource it. But you don't know what you don't know. And the thing is, 
if you want to delegate, you need to at least understand it first of all, so that when you're delegating, you know what to expect because otherwise you're taken for a ride. People will I, charge you a bucket load and you won't know why it's costing you so much and you're not getting the results you want. I, I hear you. As a business owner, we have spent so much money on VAs and all of the other stuff like technology help just because we don't understand it. It's great that you have a wonderful person to guide you, which I, I did, like which I'm very grateful for. But because I don't know what I want or what the expected outcome can be a lot of the times we don't know how to communicate without our tech Correct. person or your website designer just because you're not clear about what you do and that's the reason why knowledge is power you don't need to like it's like me I, I'm a foodie okay I love food but doesn't mean that I need to learn how to cook it it just <laughs> means that I know what my expectation is Correct. that's the difference between a successful business owner or a business worker there's a mm. very big difference in that there absolutely is uh, the third reason that you need training is filling the knowledge gaps because uh, no one is born with perfect sets of skills and people going from being employed to a business there's often a huge gap in your learning and your knowledge skills so training services serves to bridge the the divide between the skills that you possess at the beginning and then at the end and this goes for anyone even if you're not in business your career you, you know you go into a career and you think oh i've made it up because i've done it seriously i get a lot of interns sent to me and uh, a, a little while ago i had about four in, uh, human resource interns now these are guys are just about to finish university and i asked them the simple question i need you to create some job descriptions and none of them had an, a clue how to do this. And I'm thinking, that's a common skill that you need in the careers. You know, if you're going into HR, you need to understand how to do this. And they had no idea. So they ended up doing a, one of my courses on how to create the the uh, the job descriptions. But it just goes to show that even at university, which we think is current, it's constantly changing and evolving. So identifying that. And as you said, knowledge is power and the business world is often the, the differentiated between mediocrity and excellence. And that's the key that we're looking for because you can bluff your way through so much, but if you don't have those skills, that essential knowledge, it comes across when you're trying to get into the big leagues sometimes. You know, you, they, they can pick you up straight away when you're flying the false flag. So you need to be able to fill those gaps before you go out. And I've, sometimes I said to people, sometimes I might try to take a step back, get it all right, and then do that giant leaps forward because otherwise people know. And it's, yeah, you've got to fill those gaps. I am constantly learning. All the time I'm learning new stuff. And um, you, you don't get bored, I can tell you that. So it's, it's good. It is so true because, um, like, the world changed so fast around us it's like this morning I was doing a post about my journey of being a coach and it was just so invigorating of what we do because a lot of the times that we look at ourselves as failures because we don't know something but it's not that we are failing and what we're doing is that there is other things that we need to know to run a business and to be the best version of ourselves it's not about uh like uh, uh, uh like a very harsh competition it is more about how to excel in ourselves by learning the things that we need Mm, absolutely. Uh, the fourth reason why training people need training is improving performance and efficiency. And for businesses, it's one of the skills in, that you need to develop um, the performance, whether it's streamlining processes, understanding software or enhancing leadership skills. Training equips you with the tools to perform at those peak levels. And so if you want to... Uh, a, a good example is customer service training on call center employees. Um, they need to know how to handle different scenarios, use different scripts, empathizing with customers and employees not only um, improve their performance, but also enhances the customer experience. So if you can enhance the customer's experience, you're going to get great word of mouth feedback and they're going to come back. But the expectation, you know, people think, oh, they should know what good customer service is. And I go, no, you've got, you, if you want to be, you've got to train them to get that peak performance. You've got to train them if you want them to be efficient. So you've got to empower them. If you don't do that, you're only ever going to be mediocre. If you want excellence in your business, 
you've got to understand it takes training. You cannot, it, this expectation is they're just going to know what good customer service is, you know. And, you know, you go to a restaurant and somebody just shoves you the plate and plonks it down. You know straight away, oh, this is not good. Um, but, you know, somebody who there on time delivers and if there's a problem they know how to handle it you know they apologize they let you know there's a problem and um they're kept in the loop uh, you know it's nothing worse than going to a restaurant and you ignore you're trying to get somebody's attention and it's like hello what's the customer experience here but improving performance and efficiency i think every business needs they they can do that Absolutely. Definitely. And especially when you're at what I call the management grade or the C-suit, if you are at that level, uh, we hold a certain expectation in us, but we can often put that perception onto our staff and our team that they don't know what to do. And who's at fault at that is actually us, that person that who's actually in leadership. And that's why a lot of women comes to me, even there at the director level or they're at management level, they wanted to be able to train their confidence in who they think that they are not. Firstly, if you're not suitable for the job, you probably won't be hired, okay? It's simple as that. Business are not stupid to hire someone that is not suitable. So how how do you actually stand out on that in the cloud, in your team and show them what you can do? That's what will make you a difference in your workplace in there. And that's why training is so important. Yes, absolutely. The one that the fifth point that everybody doesn't like, but is essential, is ensuring safety and compliance. So in certain sectors, you have to have ongoing training because it serves a dual purpose. Not only does it enhance skills and knowledges, but it ensures safety and compliance within the industries. And I don't know how many people say to me, oh, she'll be right, mate. Uh, yeah, well, do you know what the consequences of she'll be right, mate, is? Uh, the quickest, easiest one for me is uh, when I go into a uh, commercial premises, if I look to the left and to the right and I don't see those fire diagrams, I know straight away that that business is not compliant. So that's a problem. That's a red flag for me every time I go into a business. I just can't help it. Uh, and, and so, it, but the thing is, if they don't have this in place, you know, minimum three and a half thousand dollars fines and it just goes up. So this is the compliance stuff that you have to do. And so training ensures that you can tick off the boxes. And if there's ever an incident, you can say, well, I train them. Um, you know, so it protects the business owners as well. So it's really important is the safety and compliance. So that is so true. I was recently having um because of what I'm doing for our group here that we do do interviews with different experts in the field. And one of the things that I do is to have a P meeting with them. And some of the people that I was talking to, it really surprised me of how ignorance they are, thinking that they're at a certain level, but they have no insurance, no compliance, no knowledge to actually claim what they do. And that's one of the reasons why I keep this bar and standards high. It is because that there are many people, and I don't say this in, uh, in any sort of discouragement way. I say this because of that there's a lot of people who are not there yet, but act to be smart. And unfortunately, a lot of us get sucked into those things because it looks like the magic pill that we're looking for. Those yeah. ones that are about diet or success or, or how much you earn per month, those are all the magic pill hooks that people like to go on. It's not a fault. It's just human psychology. We all want a quick fix. But understand this, knowledge is the only thing that will get you where you need to go. It's not about that magic pill. It's about how to make that process easier, simpler, and more direct. And that's a company like Yes is the Answer can give you that knowledge, that skill to actually up-level. Yeah, just to encourage you, uh, I've done at least a 1,000, if not more, business audits on their fire compliance. And, mm. and out of that 1,000, only one company passed. Now, I included lawyers in that. So I had at least a dozen lawyers who, when I showed them the law, they freaked out and had to rush to get stuff in place. So, you know, these are lawyers who understand law is important, but, it, you know, 
they didn't know what they don't know. So until yes. somebody tells you what you don't know, and, and that's why we often have consultations to find out where they're at because they just don't know. But anyway, uh, number six is it foster, training fosters innovation and creativity. It's not just about learning what already exists. It's also about pushing boundaries and fostering an environment where new ideas can take root. And so training often projects a new thought and new ways of thinking and then that then can create uh, and foster innovation and creativity in a business number seven is building confidence and motivation competence breeds confidence so if more staff feel like they're, co they're competent they will project and confidence to uh, their customers and other employees in the environment. So it's really important from uh, right from junior level up to senior level that everybody gets trained and they feel confident and motivated to be there. When they're not motivated, when they're feeling uncertain, they lack confidence and they don't feel like they want to stay because they feel like, you know, they're flying the false flag. And so it's really important that training will build confidence and motivation. That is so true. Like confidence is my area and I can definitely see how many people go to work miserable, <laughs> thinking that they are <laughs> imposter, thinking that they're not good enough. They're scared to their shit their pants, but not willing to do training for themselves. So they be become stronger. So that one definitely resonates with me. Yeah. My favorite one is also staying ahead of your comp competitors, you know, yeah. um, we're all trying to capture the consumer's attention and ignorance is not bliss. In fact, ignorance often leads to bankruptcy. So training equips businesses owners to outperform their competition by honing their skills and fine tuning their strategies. So it's really important that you think of it as not an expense, but an investment that it will do it, which leads me to number nine. It's the return of in investment of training. Uh, Small to medium-sized businesses find that they can experience a 24% higher profit margin than those spend that don't spend on training. The, it's going to increase your bottom line if you actually invest in training because oh. you'll get more of a return on, than the expenses. It will flow through into your business, so it's really a powerful motivator. If nothing else, realize that it will give you great increase your profit lines. Oh, I have to share this. Yesterday, there was um, a post in another group, not in my group. Uh, they were saying that about like different business model and investment. Like one lady just come out and say, oh, like, you know, some of those uh, business model are scam and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, so uh, you're saying that if any business that require you to invest uh, is not a good business, it's a scam. I'm like, okay, so tell me which business that you don't need to put investment. Investment meaning... Uh, like financial that's one thing second thing is your knowledge your time your effort they're all investment every single business needs right. investment no matter what model it is it needs investment it could be small to start up with if you don't have a lot of capital but you still need investment otherwise you may be better off going to actually become an employee instead of an employer or business yes. owner because it's not worth it going into business in debt that's silly to do, okay? That is really silly to do. You're better off working at McDonald's than working in debt for your business. Yeah, absolutely. And so then the number 10 is that there's a lot of uh, it's tangible and intangible returns. So the tangible benefits in include increased productivity, higher quality work, and lower employee turnover. But the intangible returns are such as enhanced reputation, and equally, uh, they're just as equally valuable. So it's going to enhance your whole business model, whatever it is. And that's why the answer is yes. We're trying to bring all of the experts together so that we can actually help guide people. So they're not going to the scammers. They are people that have been vetted. They have walked the they've walked the walk, and they can and they're not just doing a talk. These are people that. Some of them are even on the global gurus list. These are top yeah. in their field that they, they can do and they bring their knowledge and each one has a unique take on it. And that's why we look at bringing everybody together into a virtual shopping center, if you would, because mm -hmm. you're not running around looking for them. They're there. They're ready to go. So, yeah. 
That is a huge difference. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of us look at our room here and thinking that, hey, uh, it's actually bad to actually invest in our business. We think that, oh, just because we haven't made the money back, we shouldn't actually invest into our business. And that's bad. That's not a business owner's mindset. That is an employee mindset. So yeah. realize where your mindset is before you even go into business. If you keep thinking that, oh, I can actually build a business with the bare minimum no it will come from somewhere either it will be your knowledge your time your effort or your capital it's either coming from somewhere otherwise a business cannot be built it's simple as that yeah one of our courses is actually called um discovering entrepreneurship if you mm. don't think you're ready for it you need to this this course is ideal because it'll run through everything to find out if you are suited for entrepreneurship you would much mm. rather find out now than after you've invested 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars into it that you are not really geared up for on being an entrepreneur yes it's a totally different mindset but as business owners it's something that you need to consider is that unless you're spending an hour a day on yourself and your knowledge you're actually going backwards because yes. you're not taking that leap forward. You're not getting that new mindset. You're not getting that new thinking, that new culture. You're not developing your business. So mm. you're th spending a, a, even half an hour a day, something every day, reading, learning, doing something to do it. And that's why we encourage us to talk, talk to people such as yourself to find out what's the next level of learning that you need to take. It is always the next step. I learned something new every day. Even just before this meeting, I learned something new from Martha today. <laughs> We're all constantly learning. And if you take that mindset, you'll have a growth, you'll have a growth mindset. If you've Definitely. got a fixed mindset, you need to consider getting out of business. You need yeah. a growth mindset if you want to stay in business, particularly today with today's changing technology and everything's constantly changing. If you can't change with it, you'll get left behind. Uh, it is it is that simple that's why they're like you know 80 percent of new business die within the first three years that's actually a, a a real statistic there and it died not because of other people's uh expectation or other thing a lot of the cause is actually from us that mm -hmm. we didn't actually become consistent we didn't actually learn what we need to learn and we didn't continue to invest on ourselves so we become stronger to fight against the competition while new competition come up with ideas and ways to promote themselves we're sitting here wondering where is the client and instead of looking at what we can do we started to go into what I call a blamer mode we go into that phase of constantly whinging and complaining about about others without having to take a peek into ourselves and ask ourselves, what am I lacking? What can yes. I do to actually make this better? How can I actually develop this? Because that is an entrepreneur mindset. That's a completely different mindset if you're employee mindset. And guess what? It's not your fault that you, if you're not dead, okay? Not everyone is made to be a business owner. It's okay. It, it, it is a different mindset. And be kinder to yourself on tour and find that happiness in your job that you're doing because nothing can beat it that way. Find that happiness because job is one of a key thing in our life. So make it enjoyable, make it happy. It's really that simple once you can break it down. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, one of our free courses is the habits of an optimist. And mm. so it's like, you know, I say to people, do that. Just watch one video every day that's in this course. Just one, do one section a day. It's only about 10, 15 minutes. And if you're not feeling optimistic at the end of it, do it again. You, <laughs> you know, you've got to change the way you're thinking if you want to really succeed. And we've all had, our, you know, the things that go wrong in life. And that's why I like it when I say to my trainers, unless you've the, the 10 years experience, unless they've gone through the valley of a shadow of death, you know, and come out the other side triumphant, it's they wallow in it. And you've got to realize it's a journey. You've got to get through it. But you learn so many valuable lessons from that. And that's what makes uh, the trainers, I think they're absolutely amazing and incredible. Uh, they, 
they have such a wealth of knowledge that I they blow me away. So I have at the moment we've got about 80 coaches and consultants and trainers on our books and they are each unique and so they all have a different flavor and different take but they all add value and that's what mm. I want. They share their knowledge and you know I say to people you can con contract with them absolutely but it'll cost you four to four to five times as much than if you just do one of our online courses because they put their essential knowledge into our online courses so they condense it down and make it easy for people to find the knowledge that they need and so for that is what I find awesome it's not they're not pre-packaged courses that are out of date you know these yeah. are this is what's working today this yeah. is what you need to know and sometimes I go you need to know this <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that <laughs> it's just like guys if you don't understand if and and it is so tr it is so true you don't know what you don't know until I tell you what you don't know. <laughs> exactly. It, yeah, is, it is It is. that way. I see a lot of aha moments with the clients that I work with. They say, oh, I didn't see it that way. I say, yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> it's gonna, because right. I've been trained into that area to speak to you in a different tone, in a different way, to open your minds up and always have that compassion of being the milk so we don't go high in our emotion and then low into other areas. That's actually what this, uh, the, the statics that you want from your courses in there. Yeah. So today has been a wonderful chat. I'm sure that a lot of us have learned a lot. So anyone that who wants to reach out, I will put Corinne's uh, company details in there. There is a link underneath to actually find her. Any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much for being my guest today. It has been such a wonderful joy to talk to you thank you for so much for having me martha i appreciate it thank you once again to our listener and audience for checking with us on business monday come back for more next week we will have more ideas in supporting your business or celebrating your business on every monday on business monday at the year the girl 40 plus network see you then <laughs>